welcome you to St. John's United Church for our online worship. I don't think I mentioned last week, I was a little rushed, is because Lorraine and I, my wife, we became grandparents to Alice Marie Lorraine Fernal, a little baby girl, eight pounds, two ounces. So please pray for, for Josh and Caroline, the parents, and may they be blessed by God. And we do thank God for this great blessing upon us. And now may this service help you in your life and help you in your faith with Jesus Christ. Peace be with you. I am the salvation of the people, says the Lord. Should they cry to me in any distress, I will hear them, and I will be their Lord forever. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. <music> Psalm chapter 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish.
Jeremiah chapter 11, verses 18 to 20. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their evil deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, and I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Selections from James chapter 3, verse 13 to chapter 4, verse 8. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The Holy Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 30 to 37. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, the Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me.
Grace is a gift. Now, a gift is free for those who receive it. But that doesn't mean that a gift is cheap. And neither is grace cheap. Diedrich Bonhoeffer was a German theologian. He opposed the Nazi regime and was eventually arrested. He was hanged on the 9th of April, 1945, just a short time before the end of World War II in Europe. He wrote many things, but in one of his most famous, The Cost of Discipleship, he writes this about what he refers to as cheap grace. Cheap grace is the grace we bestow on ourselves. Cheap grace is the preaching of forgiveness without requiring repentance, baptism without church discipline, communion without confession. Cheap grace is grace without discipleship, grace without the cross, grace without Jesus Christ, living and incarnate. Grace is a free gift of God offered to all people, but grace isn't cheap. It costs the Son of God, Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, his life. That is what God does for us in the person of Christ. He takes on the wrongs of the world, our wrongs, and he does it for our sake. Yet so often we treat grace in a a casual, almost disturbing way. We want the good of eternal life. Who doesn't? The good of forgiveness. Who doesn't want that? But without any actual change. How many times have I had, and and I know other ministers experience this, people that come to St. John's asking for a baptism or a wedding, people who don't seem to have any concern with faith or, or at least Christ's church. So why does a person come to a church looking for the blessing of baptism, but apparently has no interest in Christ's church except for when they desire the church's blessing? But isn't that cheap grace, as Bonhoeffer describes it? Baptism without church discipline. Grace without any cost. But all gifts cost, not for the one receiving, but for the one giving. As a Christian minister, I don't recall having ever refused someone seeking a baptism, though I admit I do raise questions with them. But perhaps what most people don't realize is that some of us in the church, we're not angry that they don't regularly attend. We hurt for them because they haven't realized the joy that comes with truly accepting God's love, living that reality which includes being a part of the body of Christ. There is great joy and happiness in knowing God's love personally. I have to acknowledge that there is also great suffering and pain that comes from knowing and seeing a world and people that reject God's love. They think they want this love. They, um, they want to be told they are good and, and deserving of this love. They, they come to get a blessing for themselves or their children, but, but sometimes have no sense of the price God paid for them and God's request for their own good that they turn back to him. You see, when we become Christians, we are submitting to God, a God who is love and wants our happiness. But this submission entails confessing that we are not our own. We now belong to another. There is a saying I have heard a lot, my body, my choice. Perhaps you have heard it as well. It's usually used as a justification for a certain controversial moral issue that I'm not going to get into today. But I've noticed it has been recently used a lot more often for those who oppose vaccinations, particularly, of course, the COVID vaccination. But from a Christian perspective, this is not an acceptable moral argument. Now, I'm speaking directly to Christians at the moment. I I can't tell others who have a different faith or no faith whether their argument is sound or not. But I can speak to Christians and assure you that this is not a sound argument from a Christian perspective. It's not for the controversial one, nor is it for those who are using it to justify not receiving a vaccine. If you are a Christian and listening to this, do you know why it is not a sound argument? It is because we are not our own. We belong to another. Our bodies are not our own. The Apostle Paul states this directly. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Paul states, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? 
For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. Grace is free for us, but it is costly for God. We were bought with a price, the price of Jesus' death. After Jesus tells his disciples that the Son of Man, that's Jesus, is to be betrayed into human hands and is to be killed, but will rise again after three days, we are told in the scripture today the disciples didn't understand him. And I think the gospel writer, in this case St. Mark, purposely told the next part of the narrative in order to illustrate that the, sti- that the disciples still didn't get it. The disciples believed Jesus was the Messiah, but they couldn't imagine how death and suffering for the Messiah could possibly be a good thing. The Messiah was king and, and would be king of everything. So instead of trying to figure out what on earth Jesus was talking about when he said the Son of Man would be betrayed and killed, they started discussing and started arguing about who was greatest of them. And this makes some sense why they would do this. They thought the Messiah would bring the kingdom of God in, and they wanted to be on the inside. So they argued about who would be the greatest in the kingdom of God. They didn't understand that to be the greatest meant to be the least. That to be the greatest wasn't about having control over others or even control over ourselves, but rather to be a servant for others. My body, my choice, is not a Christian statement. The Christian position, the way Jesus lived, was God's body, God's choice. Jesus listened and obeyed the word of his Father. He put his body on the line for you and for me, And we are called to do the same for others. It is part of the reason I chose to be vaccinated. Are there risks involved with vaccine? Yes, there are. They are rare, but they're there. But they have always been there. We have vaccinated our children for years, and though rare, there's risks even there. But today, the first to be asked weren't the children. It was us, the adults. And as a Christian, though there is a risk, it may help others to protect them. And by the way, I think the evidence is supporting that position. And so my body is not my own. It belongs to my creator. And if I can use my body to help others, then why wouldn't I? God has given me and to other Christians and offers to all the gift of true life and joy in him. It is true that we will not always experience that in this life because Christ hasn't come in his glory yet. So while we wait for him, for the Christ, for the Messiah, he calls us to live in faith and love. Love for God and love for others. Jesus paid the ultimate price, death. Death on a cross. He paid it for me and he paid it for you and he paid it for everyone hearing this. There are no exceptions. It was at great cost. The Father, God, And his beloved son, God gave his beloved son because God loved the world so much. And now, now we have the opportunity to do the same. To offer ourselves, as it says in Romans chapter 12, as a living sacrifice. Let me read that to you. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. We have an opportunity to live in that same realm of freedom for others. That is, we can give of ourselves freely in love for the well-being of other people, just as our Lord did. But it may be costly. It's free for them, but costly for us. But that is okay. That is the way of the cross, the way of our Lord. Grace is free, free for all who will receive it. But it is never cheap. Peace be with you.
and guide, you draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside our envy and selfish ambition, that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Mm-hmm.